Good morning, everybody. I am Deaconess Intern Claire here at Holy Shepherd. It is November 14th and it's time for our daily devotion. Um, we are in Matthew chapter 26 and we're starting with the 36th verse. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane and he said to them, sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two, and the two sons of Zebedee along with him and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little farther, he fell with, with his face to the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. Then he returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? He asked Peter, watch and pray so that you will not so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for the cup to be taken away unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back again, he found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he lifted so he left them and went away once more and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. Then he returned to his disciples and said, Are you sleep are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come, and the Son of Man is to be delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us go. Here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived. With him was a large crowd armed with swords and clubs sent from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a signal with them. The one I the one I kiss is the man. Arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus replied, Do what you came for, friend. Then when men stepped forward and seized Jesus and arrested him, with that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him, for all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you not think I, can, I cannot call on my father, and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled that they say it must happen in this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in temple courts teaching, and you did not arrest me. But this has all taken place in that the writings of the prophet must be fulfilled. Then all the disciples deserted him and fled. Um, so, of course, this is the arrest narrative that we see in Matthew's gospel. It varies a little bit, um, as some stories do within the different accounts. So we know from um, another gospel, and I'm blanking on which one it is, but um, we know it's Peter who cuts off the servant's ear, and we know that Jesus ultimately heals the ear. Um, other, But one thing that stays consistent is that Jesus, we know what he prays, even though it specifically says that no one was there to hear him pray because they had fallen asleep, right? Um, and so you can tell that because we know this, and even though there was no one there to experience it firsthand, because the spirit, the scriptures are inspired by the Holy Spirit, this is a moment that we are supposed to see. This is a moment that we are supposed to have to read and to learn and to digest. Um, because this is a moment that everyone will feel at least once in their life. If you only feel it once in your life, then I'm proud for you. Thank, like so happy for you. Your life sounds great. Um, but this is that feeling of just pure desperation when you hit your knees because you don't know where else you're supposed to go. And I mean, it says that Jesus fell with his face to the ground because Jesus know what's, knows what's going to happen. Um, for the person who stitched together all of the timeline of the entire creation, he understands like what is going to happen to him within the next 12 hours. And he doesn't want it to happen. Um, well, he doesn't want to experience that pain. He doesn't, he doesn't want that anguish that he knows comes with paying the price for everything. But he also doesn't automatically say, well, I'm going to fix it so I don't have to do it. Instead, he, he says, I don't want to do this. But if this is what got like the will of the father, then this is what's going to happen. Um, and you see that it, you just, you don't, of course, we don't hear the father's reply. This is, of course, um, lots of scholars now know that this is the part in Matthew where the father goes completely silent. There is no reply to Jesus's prayer. There is no sign from the father, like at his baptism or um, the, uh, epiphany when he's revealed in all of his glory and stuff um 
but so it's it's just one of those things where we have moments where we just don't hear a response um and as we see here that doesn't mean that god isn't listening it's not that he doesn't hear us it's not that he doesn't feel this pain for us or with us but it's just that sometimes we don't get an answer in the moment of our agony um which is either comforting or infuriating and that is okay because sometimes that's just the way it is um then when jesus is arrested of course, I always think it's very interesting that even though Judas is literally handing him over, he is the reason they know who Jesus is. Otherwise, they could arrest like all of the apostles because they don't have like a printout of his face. Um, he kisses him and Jesus says, do what you're supposed to do. And he calls him friend. Um, because even in that moment, Jesus does not harbor hate for anyone. Um, he's not... Like there, there is so, he is such the embodiment of love and care and mercy that even Judas, he can't, like, he just doesn't, I mean, I would probably slap him in that moment, but that's just me. Um, but so then one of the reasons, then finally in 55, Jesus asks, am I leading a rebellion? Because all of these soldiers are here with their weapons drawn and Jesus points out, I have done nothing to warrant this kind of attention. I haven't done anything that um, incites rebellion, incites um, disobedience. Like he has been a very peaceful man. And then of course it, it happens at night, which is interesting because it has to happen in the cover of darkness because um, the Pharisees, the Sanhedrin are upset and like worried that if they arrest Jesus in public during the day, then like they're afraid of a crowd might come up and like, come to his aid um so that's an issue and that's also why they have swords which granted since peter was around might have been a good thing um but yeah so then we'll move into the actual questioning of jesus as well as judas's death um probably tomorrow but now let's pray the lord's prayer our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So, announcements. Um, we have ladies' Bible study today at 1. Um, if you're a lady and would like to do a Bible study, come over to the church at 1. Tomorrow we have youth night at um, 6. Tomorrow is also the day that I will be taking Operation Christmas Child boxes that are here to my right, which is why I'm motioning. Um, so if you could get your boxes to the church before Wednesday, like noon, that would be excellent. Thursday, Mahjong at 10, followed by Grief Share at 7. And then the other shenanigans that go on throughout the week that I am unaware of or forget to mention. But other than that, um, I hope you all have a very blessed day and I will see you all tomorrow.